Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to another Linux review. In the past, I have looked at a lot of different Debian distributions, but I have never, and I realized this this week, I have never looked at Debian Vanilla. No version, flavor, distro, spin, just Debian. Now, as I've said in the past, I've been always quite impressed with the Debian-based distributions. Wheezy has been very stable, very wonderful, and I have looked at a lot of different distros that I have been just wowed about when it comes to Debian. So I thought this week, let's go back to a first impressions on an oldie but a goodie, but something I've not really looked at, Debian Vanilla. Now, not to sound like I'm starting on a sour note, but I was a little disappointed with my whole install experience. The main reason is, cause, is because I felt like the install of Debian was very bland, um, not very user friendly. I've seen a lot of different installs with Debian and they were all super simple to use, easy good flow of concept but vanilla Debian left a little bit to be desired on its installation the other thing that I ran into which was a huge hiccup for me was the firmware for my wireless card was not included with the Debian setup now the nice thing is that they gave me the option to be able to plug in another USB stick with the firmware on there so that I so it would load it and I could go forward but it gave me in no way shape or form ability to just well there would be no way to download it of course but uh, they didn't give me any other method of how I'd look for it where I would find it or anything else so it was a difficult install to get that find a USB stick I could stick that on and place it into the setup so that it would work so that was very disappointing about the distribution I was however able to find my firmware get it placed on something and move forward the other thing that I thought about the installation that I was slightly disappointed with was I thought I'd have a little bit more control over the package management. And in fact, it kind of implied at one point in time that I may be able to choose XFCE or KDE or something else for my GUI interface. However, that was not an option when I got to the package choices. All I had was a Debian desktop. So, what does a Debian desktop give you? Well, at this point in time, the DVD number one that I downloaded and set up gives you GNOME 3. Now you know what my feelings are about GNOME 3. Yeah, it is what it is. And it's not that difficult if you want to install a different desktop environment. You can use Synaptic Package Manager or, or apt-get and tell it to install something else. Now in my case I went ahead just to see how difficult that would be installed KDE full checked it out it works it runs no errors no problems so I have KDE and GNOME both working on this without any problems so kudos to that while it does put GNOME on there right away you still have other options now, as to package selection, the packages that are installed are great. It does come with the uh, Ice Weasel version of Firefox. 
LibreOffice if we look at the activities. Now, if we look at activities and go to applications, you will notice, of course, that there are a lot of KDE applications built in here, too, because you're going to see that because I installed the KDE full, it kind of combines them all and puts them together. So, you know, your typical accessories, some fun programs in the education area. If you can remember Turtle from way back when, I remember playing that in the second grade, I believe, second, third grade, something like that. It's pretty nice. Um, a lot of games, which, you know, it's always good to have a time waster to play with. Graphics, of course, it comes with Inkscape and the GIMP and Shotwell for your videos and your photos, I mean. As I said, Internet, Ice Weasel. And in Office, it has the LibreOffice Suite, which is always a great Office Suite to have. If we move on, the rest is just pretty typical. It did come with VLC installed. Now, I installed the GUVC Viewer and Simple Screen Recorder, which were very easy to add to it. Cheese, as I said, gave me some problems, though. I tried to use Cheese because it's the default application, I believe, for GNOME, but for some reason I kept getting GDK errors. At least it would start to pop up and then it would just disappear. Whenever an application pop ups, you know, and then just disappears, the best thing to do is open up a terminal and try to run it from the terminal because then you can see the errors that are coming up. Now, in my case, the errors that were coming up seem to be dedicated to GDK issues and one moment I'm about to sneeze so I'm going to pause I think I barely made that <laughs> anyway in the terminal it was coming up with errors with GDK and the way it was viewing some items now I looked all over the internet for this I tried to reinstall cheese I tried a whole bunch of other stuff the somebody had mentioned something about it being possibly a security issue or an admin issue. So for grins, I tried to do like a sudo run cheese and it worked. Came right up. So I thought, okay, what's so special about the administrator that my user account can't do it? So I created a test account and I ran cheese from there and it worked perfectly as well. So, I said, all right, we're getting somewhere. It doesn't work inside my DOS Gregor ID. Now, the big difference is with this particular setup is that I have a home partition that I have kept so it has source code, some other stuff that I use with every distro review that I look at. And so I thought, well, something might be kind of messed up with that user ID. So I backed up my data out of that home directory, blew away the Dos Gregor user ID, recreated it, and voila, cheese works now. In the meantime, of course, I used the good old GUVC view, which I like a lot, and just decided to go with it instead. But it is nice to know that cheese was not really broken, that it was a profile issue. Now, I am curious, and we might do this as a test right now. If we open up the terminal and I write cheese, oh dear, if I do that with that, we'll see if it blows up the webcam. But yeah, you see these errors here? We'll go ahead and close that. That's what I was getting right there. GDK warning attempting to add a widget with the type GDK image to a GDK button, but as a GDK bin subclass, a GDK button can only contain one widget at a time. It already contains a widget of the type GDK label. Evidently, that has nothing really to do with the proper error. It pops up every time. And of course, the device of course, is being used because GUVC is being used. And luckily, it didn't blow anything up. But that's all that was popping up. Just these errors right here. Nothing else. I looked online and I, I found all these places that said solved. Do you know how aggravating it is when marketing solved because no one's really fixed this and I'm tired of waiting? then don't mark it solved because it's not really solved. No one had a good excuse or an answer. The closest that I came was someone saying about the security issues, which made me wonder, okay, let's try this with a different user or do this with my super user 
to find out if it still worked. Now, other than that though, everything else has been good. There are some things about GNOME that I don't like at all. Like for instance, the default here has an X and there's no way to minimize and maximize without right clicking. Now I found online, however, that you can download in the applications area and get this running, advanced settings, and this is cool. So in advanced settings, and I wanted to sh just show this, now, I'm a GNOME noob. <laughs> I don't really care for GNOME, but under shell here, there was arrangement of buttons on the title bar and I found out instead of having clothes only right here I could say all oh, and they all showed up I like having all of them I wish that was default but at least they gave me an ability to fix it so that I could have it the way I wanted it to be that was something very nice in their setup now everything else seems to run very smoothly. I did test out YouTube, a few other GUI stuff. Everything seemed to be good. If we go back to here and try out GLX Gears, you will see that we do get the GLX Gears coming up. Let's see about what kind of 433 frames per second or yeah, 2,168 average frames in 5 seconds. That's pretty good. It's using the Gallium you know free drivers and I don't mind using that over Nvidia because it does have an Nvidia chipset but the free drivers do work I don't have a problem using open source drivers I mean it does bug me about the whole firmware pro issue and I realize you can't have the firmware for every device out there but it just really shocks me when all the other flavors of Debian out there don't have this problem but in the vanilla edition, I did run into it. One pet peeve, I guess, of mine. Other than that, though, great system, simple to use, easy to run, good applications. If you've never really run with any of the other flavors of GNOME and you want to try it, this has been a good introduction to GNOME. I mean, from what I have seen in the past, anyway, you know, this has been a lot better than some of the other uh, systems that came with GNOME by default. So it's just something to think about. Other than the kind of cumbersome setup process, which I really think they could do a better job at, I mean, other than this setup process, the only other one or distro that I don't really care for the whole setup process, which is kind of difficult, not very user friendly, is probably Slackware's setup process with its menu system and and uh, text-based settings and so forth but you know that's a personal preference never one that could be said that it's right or wrong it's just a personal preference I guess you get spoiled with all the GUI interfaces and things that people have polished and made to run much better so anyway as I've said in the past, or last week anyway, I'm going to be probably be taking a week or two off pretty soon. No distro reviews for the next, the next couple weeks. I've not missed a distro review in over a year. My first season, I didn't even make a break between season one and season two if you want to call them seasons. I have started a couple of their playlists, second glances, and also um, miscellaneous OS's as well. You know, looking at I looked at BSD for the very first time ever with uh, PC BSD, I believe it was. I looked at it a couple weeks ago. So all of that's kind of new. I'm getting a lot of subscribers still, which is a good thing, because I said when I hit a thousand subscribers, I would start looking at trying to record from start to finish and I may pay for this greatly it may be way too much I said I may try I, I said I would try and I will attempt to try to record installing Linux from scratch start to finish in a virtual box I'll be honest with y'all it, it won't be fun I spent 10 hours doing about four or five hours worth of Gentoo 
installation review and I need to get that going again with the new hardware so that we can go uh, where to go to from there where I just show you okay now that you have Gen 2 installed now that you can boot into it and you've got your command prompt how to install a GUI interface how do you install XORG and get to a graphic user interface within Gen 2 and I do need to do that as well I'd like to do that all of that to come but I do need to take a break I've been doing these for a while and I'm just needing a little bit of a rest <laughs> now I'm not sure if I will have abilities to do any videos while I take this break uh, but I may try to do just a vlog or something uh, but I'm not sure if I will have my laptop or somebody's, somebody else's laptop to do that on so I'm not sure so thank you for watching whether it's even morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Continue to subscribe, watch the other reviews. Thanks for all of your suggestions of distros to look at. I will be doing my best to try to look at some of those in the near future when I get back in the swing of things. And have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye.